The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Center for Clinical Standards and Quality, brings you CMS QI Voices, an audio series that gives you a closer look at the projects and people who are improving healthcare quality and outcomes. These brief conversations include detailed show notes for even more insights into the process behind healthcare quality improvement and how you might adapt these to your own organization. In this series, CMS explores how nursing homes and Quality Innovation Network quality improvement organizations have worked together to tackle challenges related to COVID-19 vaccination, infection control, and the use of therapeutics to improve resident outcomes. Let's listen in. Welcome to CMS QI Voices, Improving COVID-19 Outcomes in America's Nursing Homes. I'm Colleen Fry, Acting Director, Division of Community and Population Health, Center for Clinical Standards and Quality at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Today, I'm joined by several of my colleagues from Comagine Health. Comagine is the Quality Innovation Network, Quality Improvement Organization, partnering with nursing homes in Idaho, Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, Utah, and Washington to improve resident outcomes. Shannon Feingood, Patient Safety Manager, Donna Thorson, Patient Safety Manager, and Dr. Tan Ong, Clinical Medical Director. Ms. Feingood oversees vaccine education, support, promotion, and resource development for long-term and post-acute care centers within Comagin Health Quinn QIO region. Ms. Thorson convenes and facilitates collaborative groups across the Quinn QIO region to identify and implement evidence-based strategies to improve healthcare processes and systems using human factor science to enhance intervention effectiveness. Dr. Ong practices and provides clinical leadership in many nursing home environments and is practiced inpatient and outpatient medicine at Harborview Medical Center since 2008. In today's episode, we will be focusing on overcoming staffing issues to prevent the spread of and mortality from COVID-19 in nursing homes and other long-term care settings. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. What role do staff play in preventing COVID-19 spread and mortality in long-term care facilities? Thank you, Colleen. Over the past three years, there have been many changes to regulations and guidelines for infection prevention, therapeutics, personal protective equipment, quarantine and isolation. Staff are experiencing PPE burnout and infection prevention burnout, stress and overload. Nursing home leaders need to actively support staff in PPE and IPC vigilance through regular competency trainings, testing and retraining, all while reinforcing positive behaviors through rewards and recognition. Families also play a role here. So we recently created a quick guide for engaging residents and families with infection practices and long-term care. A link to these resources is available in the show notes. Thank you. What barriers do staff still face as they strive to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Thank you for that question. Shortages and turnover in both frontline staff and critical leadership positions are major barriers. Many are moving away from reliance on agency staff. Some have successfully achieved that goal to be fully staffed without using agencies. Approaches to this vary, but often include a focus on retaining the staff they already have by creating a retention committee to explore and implement activities like mentor programs, recognition programs that include gestures of gratitude like a thank you card or a gift, and activities that support resiliency and well-being. Other centers conduct stay interviews with staff to learn more about why they chose to stay with the organization. Those that are able raise wages to be competitive with other facilities and local businesses. Having the internal capacity to fully staff each shift allows the center to implement consistent assignment where staff get to know residents, their needs and preferences, and their baseline for health. This improves their quality of care and their outcomes. What do staff need to continue doing to remain successful in preventing spread and to keep everyone safe, resilient, and vigilant? Thank you for that question, Colleen. Some skilled nursing facilities have been successful during COVID-19. There are several aspects that leaders in a skilled nursing facility have direct control over, 
that have led to success in preventing the spread of infection and keeping the staff engaged. One of those aspects is good role modeling. Shannon spoke earlier about maintaining vigilance. Good infection prevention practices should be role modeled by facility leadership. So when the administrator, the director of nursing, and others viewed as leaders in the facility wear a mask consistently, then other staff members are more likely to follow suit. Another aspect is ensuring that all staff, agency staff, including CNAs, are involved in morning care huddles, understand expectations, and have the ability to voice their concern and observations. Giving a voice to staff involving them in residents and patients' care is important to add value to their work. Before we close, what else would you like our listeners to know about managing staff issues as they go back to their work in our nation's nursing homes? Thank you. Yes, it's crucial for staff to have a voice in resident care. Comagine Health is promoting a technique that incorporates staff in quality improvement. We call it the 15 minute a day approach. The focus is on making one small effort every day that adds up to big change over time. This technique is included in our Driving Clinical Excellence Collaborative Learning Series, also linked in the show notes. Thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you all for your time today and for your work helping nursing homes ensure the health and safety of our residents in the age of COVID-19 and beyond. To our listeners, thank you for joining. Be sure to join us next time to hear more impactful interventions for increasing vaccination rates and reducing mortality in nursing homes. To learn more about today's episode and to access all of the CMSQI Voices audio series and show notes, please visit qioprogram.org slash CMSQI Voices. Thank you for listening to CMSQI Voices.